Hello, it's Moira MacDonald. Thank you very much for joining me in my home today. Uh, new camera set up. Not sure how this is going to go, but we'll see. Um, right, I, I'm i going to make some tags and I'm going to do a bit of decoupage on them. Uh, I have to confess that decoupage itself is not one of my favourite things. Um, mainly because it tends to be messy uh, and I don't like mess. Um, it's very gloopy. What with glue and whatever and having to use a fairly uh, large amount of glue. But I'm going to do this uh, from the very beginning and as far as, um, you know, actually breaking down the napkin into the way I would do it and, and we'll take it from there. Now, this is a bit of a napkin I've got left from a journal I made. The, the, the journal I made for the kind of, it was uh, the guest design team spot with FMOR. Um, so this is a part of the napkin that was used as a cover in the, I think, the smaller of the journals. So the, it's all that's left of this one. Although, of course, I do have another three uh, because you never buy anything singly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this napkin um, in readiness for um, doing a tag with it. Now, what I'm doing here is using a wee brush. To be honest, I wish I had a smaller brush. Um, just to ground it with water because I want to separate it and what I have found um, not only when I've been watching other videos but once you actually start trying to do a bit of decoupage with napkins and whatever and rice paper for that matter it is um, a much more attractive finish if instead of cutting round an image you actually sort of separate it this way because it tends to look the feathered edge looks more natural let's just put it that way um, when you do it by uh, cutting around it what you get is a fairly stark line and it's not always all that easy to make it blend into whatever it is that you're decoupaging it on top of so this does make it a wee bit easier I have to say, by the way, decoupage is not one of my favourite things. I am not, um, I'm not big on this at all. Uh, it, I think it's it's quite a it's quite a difficult art uh, in its in itself. Uh, but I mean, having said that, I'll I do it from time to time. So uh, I'll just batter ahead, and we'll get these ready. And that way you can see the entire process. It's it's not quick. I have to say it's not quick at all. Because by the time you've done this and you've let everything dry, um, it, it does. I hope you're getting this okay. Because I'm not sure with this camera if I've got angles just right. And we had a bit of... A bit of hoo-ha trying to set up the camera. I'd actually caught a video. Um, it was a guy that does cookery videos. And he was showing his camera set up. And how he worked it. Um, and he recommended the, the kind of arm and the, what's called the ball head. That enables you to move things about a wee bit. Um, so I ordered them last week from Amazon. They weren't expensive. Uh, in total, I think it came to something like eighteen pounds. Um, so I ordered those from Amazon. Right now, I'm going to show you how to get this off. And I learned this one from Crafty Irina. Use a bit of normal sellotape tape, and it pulls off your first layer of backing. And oops, then you rip your napkin, your second layer. Once you've got it started, it's a little bit easier to get it off. That's us, that's that one done. Uh, I have ripped that slightly, but that'll not 
cause a major problem. So that bit's ready to be used. We'll put that over to the side. Now this is quite relatively plain, this bit that's left, but that doesn't mean to say we can't use it. Um, it can still be used to uh, add to something. So we'll just rip round the edge to make it look more natural. Now this bit's dry. You'll hear it. You'll hear the difference, obviously, because it will. You can hear it tearing when it's wet. You don't hear it tearing. Just separate it there. What I'm doing, mate, and then a bit of sellotape to take the backing off. that bit there ready to be used as well. Uh, now I've got some rice paper here which I'm going to show you is exactly the same sort of idea. Um, there's absolutely no point you sitting watching me what doing. I've got another couple of napkins to do but it, it takes time so rather than force you to sit and watch me tearing that um, I'll just do this with a, uh, the bit of rice paper so you can see it works in exactly the same way. And you, you can really see the feathery edge on the rice paper. And it does, uh, I mean, it, with rice paper in particular, it really does make, in my opinion, quite a bit of difference. If you, if you just cut around something, it really does not look as natural when you go to, to use it. Um, so this particular rice paper I think is a Stamperia one, it's, it seems to be alphabet letters. I'm pretty sure I've actually got a paper pad from this particular uh, design. That wouldn't have been an intentional thing. That would have been a let's panic buy something because it's got the name Stamperia on it and we like that. So I'll just uh, finish this wee bit. And that be those bits ready. That's the letter F. And go around this one because it's right on the edge of this particular piece. And it's it really I can't see enough how much of a difference this makes. It really just makes for a much more natural looking uh, finish. Oops, that's me not over the sellotape. There you go. And that one. Every flower is a soul bl blossoming in nature. Oh, very nice. Wait a minute, I don't like that. I've got a bit a bit of the, uh, whatever that was next to there. And we made that very nice finish. The fibres in rice paper can make it quite awkward sometimes, so you need to be fairly careful. There you go. I've actually got, um, if I can find it here, I did a I did a, an envelope yesterday for the journal I'm working on. And I did a wee rice paper uh, kind of stamp, if you like. It's just a wee design. I've actually got the design in a bag. I'm going to go around her in a wee minute just to get... She's she's awfully big for using on any project. Um, again, and these are things I didn't really think out. Um, but when you're picking um, decoupage items, 
or any item for for making things, you really need to consider um, the size before you start if it's going to fit with the projects you're using. Uh, so I made this envelope yesterday, and this um, with the sewing on the the back here, it's it's a book page. That's the image that was on the book page. And it's a story called Mary's Lamb. Um, I, I just cut out a couple of wee fabric pieces and sewed them on. And I'd, I'd actually done this. I was watching a video by um, Minxie, I always call her. <laughs> I'll, I'll link to her channel below. Uh, my friend Vic Victoria, she had done um, some envelopes the other day, but she'd been using papers and had sewn them on in a variety of fashions. So I've just done it with fabric in this one. And then I just, that's a wee vellum sticker down there and a piece of vellum washi and I used that wee decoupage image in the top there and did a bit of stamping round about it. So that's, that's that one. There's another envelope I've done. Uh, this is decoupage stripes, rice paper here and here. Um, and again on the back of the envelope just on music paper so I'll be doing something like that today but with a view to using it instead of in an envelope on an actual tag um, so well just a minute I'm going to do this lady while I think I'll actually take it closer to the image itself as opposed to I've left a white border at the top and that's not necessarily too big a white border in my book for what, given the size of the image I don't want it to be absolutely massive in an ideal world if the paintbrush I'm using if it was smaller so that I could make this a bit sort of finer amount of water because I tend to feel that I'm using an awful lot of water so when my bit of uh, you know for doing my feathered edge I end up a, can be ripping away part of the image and I don't really want to do that if I can avoid it but I do want to get rid of a fair bit of the white I don't need to have her surrounded with the white bit because it will blend in anyway once I discover what I'm going to stick her to right, that, I think that will do me I'll let them dry I'll let them dry off and I'll finish doing some more of the other decoupage uh, then once I've got all those bits prepared we can start in the next part of the process okay right so here's where we're sitting um, I have taken a piece of card not terribly thick card I have to say a piece of card and I have glued some book page to it because that's going to be the background to my decoupage. Now I personally, this is just my opinion, how I deal with things. Um, I, when I have done decoupage on top of book pages before and music paper and whatever, I don't feel that the decoupage looks particularly good unless you blur this out in a fashion. And by blurring it out I mean if you use a bit of gesso on your book page it makes the image a lot less distinctive below your decoupage if you just decoupage straight on that generally speaking your decoupage just looks um, I don't know a good word for it apart from really not very good um, it's just the image isn't very crisp your, you know your top image isn't very crisp it literally does blend in with the words in the back and it makes it look as if um, you've you've just stuck something on top of it and it really it just it doesn't work for me I much prefer to use a bit of a, uh, a bit of gesso on this now the one I'm using is a uh, Finnebear Art Basics it just so happens that I watched that many videos where it was used that I thought hey I'll need to buy some of that um, it seems alright, I don't have a problem with it. It's fairly thick, um, but it seems to do the trick. So in that respect, I had I had a liquid gesso. Uh, in fact, I still have it. I still use it occasionally. Wait till I see if I can find it. 
that's not it. That's uh, must be it. Uh, I know that's not reaching. Well, maybe I threw it out on the basis that this wasn't working for me. I had. Um, oh no, wait a minute, there it is. Uh, I had Liquitex Professional Gesso, uh, which is described as surface preparation, and it is surface preparation. And it would be absolutely excellent if all you were doing with this was just literally preparing a surface for paint to go on top of it. But what I would say is, when you're doing this sort of decoupage thing, you know, and you're actually planning and making an image blend into the background, liquid gesso isn't the best. <clears throat> because it's too watery. You're really much better with the heavy gesso because it gives you much better coverage. Now, I'm not talking about piling a ton of this on. I am literally just wanting to obscure the writing slightly, not make it screamingly obvious. Now, when I'm done uh, doing the decoupage and whatever, I am planning on die cutting tag shapes from this. Uh, so we're going to have bits that are white below it to, to blend in with things. We're going to have bits with text. It's just going to be something that's not... Uh, just something that's not samey, if you know what I mean. Something that's going to have a bit of but I added interest in every respect. Now I've used, for text, I've used um, my German book with a fancy kind of gothic script. I've used some dictionary page because again I like um, just different types of texts. Uh, if I'd had enough room, I mean I'm probably, I'm obviously going to make more than a couple of tags here. Um, but I'm not necessarily filming them all. There really isn't any point because all it does is bore you. Um, if you've seen it once, you've seen it. This is this is literally to show you the techniques that we're talking about here. So uh, I'm not. Uh, I quite like doing music paper as well. But again, you don't want the music paper to be screamingly obvious in the background. You like it to be there. But it's as if it's the kind of uh, the opacity, if you like. Here's me getting fancy. The opacity of your background is uh, to be much less significant than your foreground. So what's in the back is to be less visible than what's in the front. Now the other thing is, before we actually do the decoupage, we need to let this dry. So, for me there'll be another pause. You'll not notice it because the video is just joined together. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't show up so much for yourselves. But for me it's like four hours of pause. <laughs> no, not quite, but... I mean, that, uh, that's what makes me laugh, you know. It's, I, I know Zoe's, Zoe Toffield. Hello Zoe, I don't know if you're watching. Um, Zoe's been doing a series fairly recently about 15 minutes tags and I watch and I think to myself, how do you manage that? I, honestly, I can't do anything quickly. Everything I do has a break in it, in, inevitably. Uh, well, to be fair, most of the time everything I do has a break in it because I've got to run and open the door for a dog or something. Oh, there you go. Is that by magic? Oh, Timmy. Are we out and play? Go on. Um, so, you know, everything I do has a break in it because of the dog or the washing machine will have finished and I've got to stop and empty it out and put it in the tumble dryer or somebody will come to the door. Nothing ever goes smoothly for me. Nothing gets nothing gets done in 15 minutes. Right, on the gesso front I think that'll do me. So I'm going to stop and let that dry and then when we come back we'll actually stick on the napkin and the rice paper. I was, uh, as I was going round the, na the napkins and the rice paper, that's rice paper, right? It actually struck me that rice paper itself really is much, much better to do decoupage with. Napkins I don't like working with because they are so fine. 
whereas there is a measure of body to rice paper um, and when you when you wet it it doesn't start to disintegrate the way a napkin does napkins really don't they don't hold glue very well so you need to be very very careful um, when you're gluing them anyway we'll discuss that when we actually get to the bit so I'm going to leave that to dry and uh, we'll come back and do the next bit shortly so we're back um, and we're dry I think um, so we're going to just get straight into trying to uh, actually stick some of this on this card um, back to my matte gel Liquitex matte gel um, I don't like uh, what's it called Mod Podge don't like it at all I find that it leaves everything with a kind of sticky surface when you go over it to seal it so I just I don't use it um, I've got some and I dare say I'll use it at some point simply because um, what options do I have? it is in the house anyway right let's get into the the nitty gritty here um, so I'm just going to stick stuff down and see how we go on I'm wanting this bit near the edge because I've cut it from the edge of a napkin so I'm putting my glue I don't want to put a ton of glue on uh, but I'll, I need, I really obviously need to have enough to make sure that it's actually going to stick the bit of napkin so let's get that the edge as close to the edge as I can and my trusty bit of acetate which is all glue and really should be getting washed I, I find that if I use a piece of acetate to hold it down See if I just try to go over this with a brush on my fingers, napkins in particular, uh, just they just disintegrate because you're putting you're putting a wet glue brush on top of it, and it will start to disintegrate straight away if there's any air bubbles underneath it. So what you're better doing is, or what I like to do, uh, because obviously I am not the be all and end all about anything, and I've never said I have, uh, but this is how I do it. I use that to hold it down gently lift that up that way when I want to do a coat of uh, glue over the top to seal it it's got a much better chance of there being no air bubbles below it so it'll stick better uh, just a wee bit there right that's that now I'm not going to do the thingy till the end the what do you call it the Uh, going over it with the glue till the end because I want to make sure it's all stuck first of all so let's see next so we can overlap things to some extent my whole I'm not going to cover my entire background with a uh, napkin because I will beyond this uh, be adding um, something else to whatever tag I make you know I'll be putting a focal image on it so the, the decoupage if you like will in this instance still form a background on my tag um, if it's feasible try to get your glue as thin as possible don't have a, a big globule of glue because that compounds your issues when it comes to sticking things down It's a particularly horrible day weather-wise here. Um, I'm got, well, I mean, having said that, it's not actually raining yet, but it, I don't think the rain's very far away. <clears throat> it's, it's very windy. 
but that's nothing unusual, it's always very windy here. Now, I'm assuming I've got enough here to put my trusty acetate on and try to flatten it down a bit. You'll see, I'm hoping you'll see anyway, what I mean, oh, tons of glue in that now, uh, that about the, the image of the actual, uh, what do you call it, the image of the flower itself from the napkin is better. Now I've got an air bubble under that, so there couldn't have been glue under it, and I need to be very careful when I go over that, because see, as soon as I touch that, that's just going to burst. Um, Gosh, I forgot what I was saying there. Aye, what I was saying was, uh, you'll see yourself that the, the, the print in the background really is in the background now, and the image is more prominent than it would have been if I hadn't went over it with the, uh, what do you call it, with the gesso. I'm really good at forgetting words. Uh, right, now, I like this as well. It's actually a bit big for this wee bit, but having said that, it's, it will do. It's, in fact, I think I've got it upside down, because roses don't grow that way. Right, so we want to stick that there, so I need to basically put the glue on here. This hasn't stuck down very well here, in this corner. Not that it will matter, depending on how I cut it. Right, let's get ready to add the glue here. I could maybe have used a bigger brush here, but ugh. I'm not the best when it comes to preparing. I maybe shouldn't do tutorials because showing, showing you how I do it isn't necessarily uh, the best method of learning anything. Because <laughs> who's to say that I've got anything right? Well, I mean, having said that, I watched I've watched so many tutorials across the years um, that you know, I'm hoping I've picked up something. Let's add this bit of napkin. Now I haven't actually used any rice paper on this, but it would pretty much work the same way. Put my brush to the side. Get my trusty piece of acetate. Start. Generally speaking, doing this helps a bit when it comes to trying to get wrinkles out. Um, because I know, see the first time I did this, the first time I did the decoupage, made an absolute pig's ear out, I don't mind telling you. Um, really didn't work well at all. So, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a, ge um, I'm a genius at anything, but uh, I've seen enough that I know how not to do things. Right, I think, again, I think I've got a wee air bubble there. You really need to be careful with that, uh, because again, see as soon as you go over that with thing there. That's all rip. Sticks it down and then it pulls it up. Right, I'm going to leave that because there's absolutely no point. I'll just make it worse. Right, that's us. I've stuck it down. What I need to do now is I need to let it dry. And once it's dry, 
I'll come back and go over it very lightly with another layer of matte medium or matte gel um, just to seal it. So we'll leave that, but you'll notice that air bubble there is going to pose me a problem. Depends how that dries out, whether or not I'm going to get away with this or not. But uh, we'll play it by ear. We'll not, uh, not panic. We'll let things dry and then once they're dry we judge much better if we can save it or not. Because I've thrown things out before and it's um, it's a wee bit of a mugs game because you can, generally speaking, you can redeem things. Now I'm just looking at that wee bit in the corner there and I'm thinking could I add that wee bit of rice paper and I probably could actually. Because I've got a wee bit up the top. And just put the glue here. I still maintain if you want to do decoupage and you want to do it and make it uh, look great you're better off with rice paper than you are with uh, napkins. Napkins are they're not the best. They're the cheapest because rice paper's oh, I mean, it's not astronomically priced but it depends what your budget is. But I mean I must admit I would say in my experience using rice paper of course the other thing with rice paper is you don't have the same range of um, choice but it really does work so much easier there's much less chance of it ripping when you're doing this right that'll do for me lid on the glue I'm going to wash my wee bit of acetate as well right so that's us for the time being. We'll let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll um, give it a coat of matte gel then we'll tackle die cutting it uh, and turning it into tags. And we're back again. Hold on to move the camera. Right hopefully that's us. I hope you've seen everything I've done so far. Um, right so now we're at the point where we want to provide a top coat to this. Uh, and we need to be careful when we're doing that in relation to um, air bubbles that I've created in the decoupage. Not deliberate, I have to say. It's just the way it goes. And the air bubbles are much more prevalent when you use napkins than if you use uh, rice paper for decoupage. Rice paper really is much better. More expensive, but much better. Less choice, but much better. I mean, having said that, there is, there is actually quite a lot of rice paper out there uh, that you can use for decoupage. It's just, I, I know here it's, it's a lot more expensive than it is uh, for napkins. Right, so all we need to do is basically give it a wee top coat gently. I've used a thicker brush this time just to speed things up a wee bit. Uh, because, oh, that's it. Clinking the arm of the camera thing. Oh, that's it clinking again. Maybe should have moved the camera back a bit. Turn it that way. Try to... not hit the arm so much. You don't need your top coat to be um, a ton. You're really just coating it to ensure everything's definitely stuck down and sealed in. Um, ultimately I'll let this dry and then what we'll do is once it's dry uh, we'll die cut it into shapes and then actually complete it as tags with a bit of uh, 
kind of focal image beyond the decoupage. Now there's the bit, the wee dodgy bit that had the air bubble in it and it's flattened down but as soon as I go over it it'll pop up. So again I need to not be heavy handed with my brush. Don't apply tons of uh, glue to that bit because all it does is makes it all wet again and runs the risk of when it makes it wet ripping. Uh, right, so there you go. I think that will do us. Just need to hold it at an angle to see if there's any bits I've missed. Down this edge could probably do me a bit, but again, I might not use that because I might be, when I die cut it, inevitably the edges will be missed. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how it works out. I think that's pretty much us, give or take. Right, so it's a question of letting that dry again. So, uh, I'll put the camera off, we'll let it dry and then I'll come back and we'll do some die cutting and see how we got on. But that's the basic gist of doing the deck. But now I could have put a wee, if I had a wee something, I could have put it there. I don't think I've got any wee things, have I? I mean, I've got the letters, but I think they're even too big for that wee bit. Have I got an individual rose? No. I do, but what I'll need to do, actually, wait a minute. I've got an individual rose. I could cut round that and just get the rose. That'll do us. It will open the glue up again. I mean, this might be academic because I might not use that wee corner. It depends how I end up die cutting this. Now, ordinarily, I would crush it down with my thingy to get my air bubbles out, but I've not got time, so I'm going to gently, very gently, go over it. But remember, when it's wet, the chances of it puckering and ripping are much higher than if you allow it to dry. There we go, that'll do for me, cock. I think, wait a minute, I'll do a wee bit in the middle. Right, that's us, I'm not going to touch that anymore. Thank wait a minute. Got a wee leaf that I could stick there. So, the upshot of all this is, what I would recommend, as opposed to what I'm doing just now, is make sure you glued your surface well, but thin layer of glue. Don't make it very gloopy, because that's the kiss of death, believe you me. I know because I've done it. Then what you do is, you put it on, get a piece of acetate, use the acetate to hold it down, um, and push the bubbles out gently. Allow it to dry. Once it's dry, assuming there are no obvious air bubbles, you can go over it with your decoupage glue again, whatever one you're using. Um, if you do have an air bubble like we had there, again be very very gentle when you're applying your top coat because it will dry and it will flatten a bit and it hopefully will be okay to, to get away with this. But we'll see, we'll see what it looks like when it's dry um, and then we'll, we'll work on what we're going to do from there. Right, so, for you, no time at all. For me, I'm going for my lunch and allowing this time to dry. And I'll also walk the dogs. That's not bad, I mean, I started this video this morning at uh, half past nine and we're now sitting at ten to twelve. 
and we've still got a fair bit of this to go so I'm really sorry but I can't manage your 15 minutes tags so when I tackle anything it's an all day shot for some reason I just don't have the look of the 15 minute tag anyway we'll see what this looks like once we're all done so pause or cut or whatever and I'll be back with you shortly so we're back and everything is dry and we're ready to make our tags now um the journal that this is going into or these are going into should i say is going to be a uh, it's a traveler's notebook so in terms of the width of the page and therefore any potential pockets it, the tags themselves shouldn't really be any wider than four inches um, so I have dug out a couple of dies, one being circular and the other one being uh, oval and I'm going to cut what we have. Now I've also backed the back here with um, just some, it is tea stained paper but it's also had um, kind of pinkish mica powder added to it. So it looks a bit like um, the sort of eco dyed avocado paper, but it's not, but it looks like it. So what we want to do is, now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I could in theory get really good value out of this depending on how I cut my tags here because obviously I'm leaving a gap up the top so it's potentially I could make something else up here um, so we'll play that one by ear I've also dug out a couple of wee bits and bobs to stick on it once we've actually cut it and some wee pearls in fact while I'm at it I'll get my wee sticky thing and we'll get these die cut now, just move it out the way to bring in my big shot. I might not have done a brilliant job of sticking the card on the, or sorry, the paper on the, the back of them, uh, but it got, it was just white paper or white card rather that I made the original tags with. So they were looking a bit grubby having run through my big shot earlier, um, and I didn't want to. Uh, just leave them as they were. So uh, I used the hold on a minute to dip, pull this out and set this up and we'll run it through. Oh 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 I normally die cut standing up but sitting down just now. Right that sounds out the way. Let's see what we've got. So I've still got this that I could use. I'll put that aside just now and we'll deal with that after I've actually decorated these. dies out of it and I'm going to go around these with some distress ink and hold on a wee second to separate all these wee cubes uh, this one is what's my favourite Victorian velvet which is the kind of pinky shade I'm just going to go around the very edge and look on the other side and maybe take a wee bit of distress ink around that.
If it's the case that it's not stuck terribly well to the back, I dare say it's going to show up at this point, in which case I can just add a wee bit of glue to make sure everything's okay. I think that'll do us. Now, I've looked out some wee items to stick on these tags, and I've got a wee image a wee vintage lady each so I'll just go around these with some distress ink as well and I've got a couple of tickets that come from some Prima marketing tickets I bought. I, I can't remember uh, which paper pad they come with because, I, I, to be honest, I don't really pay attention to that. I look at the, the colour of something and think, will that go? I know I don't have those paper pads because I don't think I've, I've got one A4 Prima marketing pad somewhere. Uh, which is very nice to the point where, you know, you don't use it because you hold it. You know what the hoarding's like. I don't need to explain that to you. Um, I've got a couple of we did I do that? No, I did. Just did they do it very strong. Uh, a couple of wee butterflies that are fussy cut. And again, I picked mostly kind of pinkish things. And my images, my two wee ladies are kind of well, one's black and white, the other one's kind of sepia toned, so they shouldn't scream out at me. Um, I've got a couple of wee bits of lace and a wee bit of fabric. The wee bit of fabric having wee roses on it, so I thought that might go. It's not screaming pink, but it's uh, in the pink family, shall we say. And I've also got some buttons. Buttons. Should I decide to add them. Four wee buttons. Right. We'll do the wee oval one first, shall we? We'll just have a look at what we've got. Um, here's my wee bit of fabric, which I've just cut in a wee, wee rectangular strip, not terribly big. And I just thought it might look nice with maybe a wee bit of lace on top. Of course, you could always sew these kind of things down, but my uh, my sewing's not brilliant, so I'd, I'd ruin things more than uh, improve anyway, any approach. What if we put that there? A wee lady and the butterfly, and I can add some wee pearls to it, quite like that. Right, so where's my glue? Give it a wee shake as if that matters, right? Now, take these off and we'll start with a wee bit of fabric. You don't need to. I mean, these are, I think these are sold primarily as kind of paper glues, these sort of things, but they will stick just about anything. Uh, you don't need to overdo the amount of glue you're using because if you do, uh, it tends to show through on the fabric. Um, my, what do you want to call it, fabric tax just a bit done and to be honest I'm not really overly keen on going out and buying some more because I was getting a bit sick of it. I was getting a bit sick of the gloopiness of it. Um, right and the lace we can just add the least wee bit of glue here as well. It doesn't need to be screamingly obvious. Just 
try and get it kind of in the middle. That's fine. Right, we'll put this little uh, ticket down the bottom. Did I put her? I like when I hold on the train now. Get my city out again. Um, I like when again I'm not. The reason I'm using acetate here is I don't want to stick my fingers on top of the picture. For but the simple fact is it does leave fingerprints and they're they're not an attractive feature of your uh, your tag. Now I don't want to stick this down completely but at the same time so I'm going to stick it in the middle right I don't want to there'll still be a degree of uh, movement if you like in the wings but we'll stick that there and I was thinking of adding some of the wee pearls to make a body if I can so these are terrible for being having a bit of static cling so we'll need to see how this goes. I think three wee pearls should be enough. And we shall start by adding, <coughs> excuse me, a wee dot in the centre first. This glue is way too thick. Way, way too thick. And I don't know why. I don't know if when I bought it it's maybe been lying for a while. Um, because I'm pretty sure I've had a neat as tacky glue before and it's not been quite as as thick as this stuff. Oops, knocked over. Now this is my wee, um, it's like a pencil but it's got a gel tip to it and it's the th tool that folk who do fingernails use for decorating you know how sometimes some folk get wee bling stones on their nails I, I have no idea what you call it I can't remember what you call it uh, but that's that's what that is right shall we stick a couple a wee button on it as well down the bottom just one wee button just to add a wee bit of button And this is your genuine bona fide vintage button. Uh, probably squeezed that a bit too much there, so I'm going to have tons of button glue. It dries clear, so I'm not going to overly worry. Right, that's that one. If you can see that, okay. And bear with me, because I'm going to try and clean that with it. Right, put the lid back on just now till we get ourselves a assembled and we'll move that out of the way and do the next one. Right, set that to the side. Let's have a look at our round tag. Now, it's not so big, uh, so we might struggle a wee bit here. But I do want to use pretty much the same things on it. So if I put my Pull those wee threads on. If I put my wee bit of fabric, I really like this wee bit of fabric, it's just a wee square I've got that I've been cutting down and using so economically so that I could get it used everywhere. And then we add our lace. In fact, we could add our lace. See if we're going to sit that right in the middle. We could add our lace in such a way that the lace comes up like a wee handle. Oh, no, I don't know if I like that. 
I don't think I do. I don't think I do. No, I don't. No, sorry. Uh, right, so if we put that there. Oh, excuse me. Just my son. Uh, I, I never hear my ringtone right, so I've got a really loud one. Okay. And he's on the train coming back from Edinburgh. Right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> right. So if we put a wee bit of fabric here. Do you know, I don't know if I like it in the middle. I don't think I do. No, I don't. What if we put it there where that... Because there's a space between those two roses. If we put that there... Where's my ticket? And put my ticket... I'm not sure about this ticket actually. Although it does have a butterfly on it. But I don't like the... It's got a kind of aqua shade in it and it really doesn't go with the rest of the tag. So I don't think that's such a great idea. Let's have a look at what else we've got. Now I've got some, I haven't opened these yet. It's from a set of Prima Marketing ephemera called Midnight Garden. And they don't look very big, the things that are in it, so we might, if we're extra special lucky, we might be able to get something. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, we're okay. I'll just bring everything out and we'll have a look at what's in it because I haven't. This has been another hoarding situation. Uh, we've got a nice flower, we've got. Can I read a piece of ephemera? Oh, there's a wee butterfly in gold. Got the wee word magic, quite like that, but I think that may be a bit big. That's too big. Oh, my back's really sore today. I like that feather actually. Oh, do you know that would go really well there, wouldn't it? I'll have a look at everything else just in case there's anything else that we can use. We've got a different feather, but I like that one. And my back's absolutely aching, I don't know why. Must have been lying funny in my bed. Well, I quite like that, that wee special. Got Wonder, but it's too big. Grateful's too big. Got Postcard. Flower Lover, quite like that. Another Feather. Bloom Together. Uh, some tickets. Sky above me, earth below me, fire within me. Mm -hmm. Indigestion then. Uh, bingo! Big feather. I like those flowers, but they don't really go with us. Excuse me. Oh, a bee. We don't need a bee because we've got a butterfly of our own. Another flower. Mm. Right, I think that's us. And we'll put... I think we'll keep... Put those back in the packet. And I have strategically opened it in such a way that with any luck I can keep it in the packet. Do you know, I, I think these companies actually specifically market things in such a way and package in such a way that you can can't open stuff without ending up using it all in one go. Would that be a surprise? No, not really. Right, so if we we add our lady here, put special there and our butterfly. See that shade of butterfly isn't ideal either actually. Why don't we take butterfly away? Move special down there. And just add some random buttons here. Well, I think that's 
I think that's okay. I think that's that's the route we shall go down with this. So glue. Yeah, I think I might have squeezed the big globule out that was causing all the problems because this seems to be moving a lot smoother. And I want to put it there between those two roses because those two roses are not from the same napkin. So they're not the same colour, they're different shades of pink. And this particular lace is quite fine relative to the other one that we used. So I need to be careful how I apply the glue to this because that's going to be initially visible but it will dry clear so I shouldn't worry too much. And again we'll try and sort of stick it down. There you go. Now that glue will dry, as I said, it will dry clear, so I'm not going to overly concern myself. Um, the die cut, as is quite often the case, the way they're cut, you get little tabs, with tiny, tiny tabs that are really not terribly noticeable, but irritate me beyond words, because I am incredibly fastidious about things like this. I like perfection. I know, I know we're told we shouldn't strive for perfection and to some extent I, I don't I don't go out of my way. Aye, I do. Who am I kidding? Everything's got to be just exactly right for me or it doesn't happen. Right, so we'll add this here and Hold that down for a minute. And do my wee lady. Stick her there. And my special had just noticed a wee tiny tab on that and all. It's in an awkward spot, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. Yep, that's fine. These are curling up, but um, again, that's the curse of the wet glue. Wet glue always makes things curl up till it's dried or stuck. I'm just going to stick these wee buttons until this. Lid on the glue and get my acetate and hold down in particular the card and paper aspects of this we've got glue all over that but we can put that aside and I'll wipe that right that's that and we'll put that to the side again and bring back what we have left and see what we can make out of this, if indeed anything. Tab. Might not be doing anything decorative with this. Just a minute to try and get it straight. And 
scissors. I need to watch where I put that because I can't put it on top of the tab that's drying. No. Uh, scissors. Don't like this. That's coming up at the side. But do you know what we could do with that? We could, first of all, Let's cut it into a shape of a thingy. Shape of a tag. Do you remember the, the banana split show years ago? And they used to show a wee cartoon called The Arabian Nights in it. And there used to be a guy that would come out and smack his hands and say, size of a whatever. And he would turn into an animal. Um, well, Shape of a tag, and there we go. Now, I'm not happy about this because this is coming apart, but I am going to fix that by sewing around it. Um, I'm not going to film that because, quite frankly, it takes me so long to get the sewing machine over that it's not worth a hassle. But we will sew that up and we will add our little bits of decoration to it. What do we have that we can add? Well, we've got our pink butterfly, which you could still add, albeit that it's not really an ideal shade of pink. But we can add our pink butterfly. So I think what I'll do is, if you can bear with me, I'll cut, sew around this, and then we'll decorate that. So we're back. I have quite quickly sewn round the tab, a tag, uh, just cut off these wee threads um, it's good enough to make sure it won't come apart and what we can do now is uh, decorate it. We don't need to do a phenomenal amount of decorating here I would say because it's not the biggest thing in the world uh, the biggest tag, so let's just find a couple of things that go. Now I'm looking for something that's prim primarily kind of pinkish or whatever. A wee German stamp or that Czechoslovakian one with the wee mouse. Um, I think I might stick with the the wee German man. Um, this is a different packet of uh, thingies. Tickets from Prima. The black one really shows it up. I think actually I prefer the, the, the darker one. In fact, if I'm using the darker one, I don't think I'm using that stamp. Because that stamp is too, too dark. I'm needing, I really need something more pinkish and I don't think I've got a pinkish stamp. Let's have a look at what we've got. I mean, I could use the brown ones. The brown ones really seem to... Um, the brown ones aren't screaming. Hold on, there's a wee French one. That's a shade of... That's a shade of pink. It's not It's not an ideal shade of pink, but it's a shade of pink. Uh, there's another one. Actually, I quite like him. What's Sverige? Is that Sweden? We'll use him. It would have been nice if I could have got a couple, but I don't think there's 
It's such a... Uh, the, the thing these are so pink. Pink isn't really a shade that you find used in stamps very often. Um, so it's kind of difficult to match it up. And I still, I'm not sure about the, let's see the, I mean the butterflies, well, I don't suppose the butterfly is too bad. No, it's too bright. Too bright. I'm just, I've got another. Uh, this is a different. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, this is Midnight Garden as well. There must have, there must have been two different Midnight Gardens, because I don't think that's the same one. Or maybe it is. Maybe about two the same. It wouldn't surprise me. No, they're not the same. They're not the same because they they show you pictures on the back actually of what's included. I'll tell you what, we'll go into the ones that we've already opened and have a look at what there is and see again if there's something we can use. It's got obviously got to be reasonably small. Another wee feather wouldn't go on this actually and I'm pretty sure we've got some. That's too big. There's a big there's a, there are smaller feathers I'm sure. Or are there? Maybe that is a smaller feather because We've got that B if it comes to the bit. How is that in relation to it? Uh, it's the same size as that. I think we'll just go with that one. Or see the B, I don't know, I don't like the B. The B just doesn't uh, no, not the bee. What if we put the feather under that? No, because then the feather doesn't look like feather. Feather doesn't look like anything. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just use this paraben, eh, paraben, no. pa aye, paraben, no. by airmail. Uh, it's a kind of, I would say it's rose gold. And we could just stick that, especially since we're using a stamp, because the post could be going by air mail, couldn't it? Yep, I think that's us. This is the route we're going down for this one. Right, we need to tidy this up. Give me a second till we put this away. Oh, I put the butterfly in. I've still got, I've still got a button that I could be using. So, oh, and that's that wee blistered bit. Remember the the bit with the air bubble. So that's quite good because if I stick this paravion sticker on it, um, that will cover that quite well. And then my ticket. Now we're going to have to watch how I stick down my ticket because with that having a metallic finish you will see any glue that comes out. So I'm going to put my ticket there, barely touching that. Then I'll get my wee, my wee man stamp. Stick him at the bottom and get my. They're deciding to play chases. Get my trusty acetate to hold things down. 
Do you know, we can also add, I think, a few... Well, wait a minute, we've got a button and we've got some pearls, but I do really like the pearls. I think they look quite rich. What if we just add, if we dot about some pearls? I like odd numbers. We've had this conversation before, so I'm not going to have it again because you'll be bored listening to me prattling on about odd numbers. And we'll just put some wee dots about the tab. Where to put my pencil? I find this quite relaxing. Maybe I should get a job doing folks nails. So we've got three on that side and we'll put two here. Now you can see the glue round about them but that that'll dry clear so I'm not overly concerned about that. Right, that's us. Enough is enough. Put my pencil away and we shall put my scissors away. We shall display our work. Oh, excuse me a sec till I stand up. Right. Move that wee button. That button's going to have to be used somewhere. I've still got, obviously still got a lot of tags to do because I did cut a lot of the uh, thing this morning. Right, that's, that's what we've done today. Um, I'll take some still photographs when I'm done and uh, add them onto the video, which is probably going to be like, feel like a day and a half long. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, that's us. Uh, there's no such thing as a 15 minute tag in this house, unfortunately. Um, hope you like these. Uh, hope you've um, crafted along in as far as I've given you something to listen to while you're doing stuff. Um, anybody with any questions, give me a wee shout and I'll see you all again in the not too distant. Bye! Bye!